thank you everyone for coming again. And uh, and I just want to begin by, so my name is Promise Lee and I'm a member of Awesome Collective and also Solidarity. Um, I just want to say a quick note to thank the various co-sponsors um, that have helped put together this event. So Solidarity, uh, Laosan Collective, uh, Internationalism from Below, Critical China Scholars, and Labor Movement Solidarity with Hong Kong in the UK, and in the US, um, the Democratic Socialists of America's International Committee, Asia and Oceania Subcommittee. So thanks again to all the co-sponsors and, and, and for everyone um, who's coming to this event. Um, so I'll pass it off to uh, Theo, um, who will be moderating um, the, the rest of the webinar and being an interlocutor with, with Ao Wang Yu, and we'll give a bit of an intro before you jump off. And on that note, I'll hand it off to Theo. Right, uh, thank you, Promise, for the introduction. I will now lay out the uh, general program of this event. So Mr. Ao will first talk about this book in detail and how it relates to the historic significance of the 2019 Hong Kong protests. This will be followed by a structured discussion section where Al and I will discuss the new union movement which grew out of the 2019 protests, as well as the sensitive topic of Hong Kong's self-determination after the imposition of the national security law. Finally, there will be a question and answer section where I will relay questions from the audience to Mr. Al. Remember to engage and frame your questions respectfully. Uh, so Mr. Al, uh, you can now begin your uh, brief speech. Hi, yes. Uh, hi, everybody. Yes, and for, uh, thank you, Sir Lao San, for organizing this exchange and has a wonderful list of organizations endorsing the event. Uh, I would like to give a seven point the presentation on the top on the topic of the historical significance of the 2019 Hong Kong resistance movement, which my book attempted to cover. But first, let me share with you my experiences in relation to my writings on the revolt. From the very beginning, I already planned to write both English and Chinese edition. And soon I realized that this required very different approaches for two different editions as their readers would be very different in perspective. A perspective which actually uh, often, often put me in a quite awkward situation, which namely is being unable to please both sides at the same time. Like the Cantonese said, uh, uh, we are unable, I'm unable to please both sides. Actually, I sometimes draw fire from both sides. Uh, so quite a number of Western readers are likely to be troubled uh, by the fact that uh, some Hong Kong protesters uh, will wave the American flag or copying Pepe the Frog for their own use. So, the question posed to me is always like this. Uh, weren't they, uh, these protesters, are uh, far right people? And then I have to spend some time try, trying to explain that for most young people, they just thought that the frog was funny. And these uh, protesters were not far right. They are because they mostly were just new hands in social movement. And in the Hong Kong case, it's not unique, but quite uh, at least uh, 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 one of the phenomena where these uh, many people there has no idea about right and left uh, dichotomy at all. But on the other hand, I also have to respond to those Hong Kong young protesters uh, who uh, uh, criticized the left because in their eyes, the left have seen them as far right people and they feel offended because of this. So I have to explain to these Hong Kong young people that, uh, well, uh, when you thought that the frog was funny, 
well, this is your opinion. I respect that, but you have to aware of the fact that uh, there is something called universal differentiations of right and left, uh, and you cannot ignore that. If you ignore that, then uh, in the end, you may send the wrong message to the people. Uh, and on the other hand, also is that uh, you may, uh, 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 I mean, this, this, this uh, uh, neglect of uh, right and left may lead you to uh, finding the wrong allies. So uh, I, uh, this experience of me uh, is something that always uh, uh, occupy my mind. And my book is an attempt to bridge the gap of understanding between the Hong Kong protesters and the English speaking readers. I'm not sure how successful they are, it will be up to you to decide. So now let us turn uh, to these uh, seven points of features that, uh, that characterize last year's revolt. Number one, uh, first we have to give a very simple uh, 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 characterization of, of last year's revolt. Uh, this is also a response to the uh, questions raised to, to me what, again and again on different sides of the readers. I will define the revolt as basically a popular democratic movement, not one that was manipulated by the US or the UK or any, any other foreign government. Because also this movement was not even about Hong Kong independence. This does not mean that the US empire did not intervene nor that no one demanded Hong Kong independence, but they were far from significant enough to really influence the movement's momentum or direction. What unified the two million protesters were the five demands, which were about opposing the extradition bill, police violence, and above all, universal suffrage. These were all legitimate demands. With last year's revolt, we can say that for the first time in Hong Kong history, the idea of democracy has taken root among the majority of the people. Do not forget that uh, 20 years ago, for instance, even if there was a rudimentary awareness of democracy, there is no such intensive support uh, among the population. And even in 2014 umbrella movement, it only received 40% of the public support. But in contrast, the 2019 revolt consistently got 60 to 70% support. On top of this is that a big section of the 1997 generation, the young people, now grabs the idea that direct actions are always required for democratic struggle. This in itself is a spectacular success. And this is in a historical context where Hong Kong is the only city in China which was daring enough to rise up against the autocratic regime. As the rest of the country has been under harsh repression and denied that there was since 1989. So now comes to the second point, which is about so-called foreign forces. Surely, there were pro-Trump parties and pro-independence parties in Hong Kong, but they were very small. In general, party politics are also very weak and fragmented in Hong Kong. The organizational weakness of the right wing, however, is compensated by a big pro-Trump tabloid, unfortunately. But yet, it was not influential enough to have any mechanism to make the movement to accept its position. And the great movement with millions uh, uh, taking part was leaderless. Such a huge movement definitely included a whole range of contradictory tendencies, including the far right, including the liberals, 
including basically majorities, were just common people. But such a huge movement, definitely, uh, uh, but we must not fooled by the highly selective reports made by the mainstream Western media, which focused on protesters waving the US flags. There was also a mass rally in support of the Catalonia struggle where 3,000 people joined. And there were demonstrations where people also uh, waving Catalan flags as well. But these were underreported. So, uh, 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 before the rally, actually, it's interesting to note that, yeah, before the rally in solidarity with Catalonia, the right wing localists tried to persuade the organizers no, 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 not to hold this because supporting Catalonia will piss off our American ally. But fortunately, no one uh, uh, really being persuaded by them and the rally went ahead regardless. One must also aware of the fact that foreign forces in Hong Kong actually are not that foreign. It has always been localized and actually institutionalized, recognized as stakeholders in the basic law by Beijing. That's why we have uh, 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 British judges in the Hong Kong court. We have uh, British uh, uh, nationalities, police officer, you know, cracking open our skulls. So, uh, uh, surely this is a colonial legacy which should be done away with, but it should be replaced by something better, not worse. Replacing the British common laws uh, still in force uh, uh, in Hong Kong under, 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 the, under basic law. Replacing these British laws with the Chinese legal system is definitely making worse for the Hong Kong Chinese. And then now uh, this leads us to the third point uh, about some drawback of this movement. I define that it was simultaneously a politically radical, but also socially conservative movement. It was politically radical is because it has practiced very intensive civil disobedience in order to make Beijing to uh, withdraw the bill. For 40 years, Hong Kong democratic movements had been exceedingly peaceful. Now this first ta this uh, taboo was broken first in 2014 umbrella movement and followed by the 2019 revolt. But on the other hand, it was also a movement which exhibits a kind of social conservatism, which never questioned anything about the free market uh, uh, ideology in Hong Kong, along with the huge economic inequalities because the movement was guided by a perspective of a dichotomies of Beijing versus Hong Kong. So everything in the world is squeezed into this perspective. Anyone who is against the CCP is our friend, including Trump. And also is that uh, whenever there are suggestions that, hey, we should also concern about the huge wave gap, or that, okay, look, uh, Trump is not reliable, but these uh, warnings are being totally ignored. It is because they thought that we have to fight the Beijing as the main enemy first. So this should be overriding uh, 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 and defining element. So uh, 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 why is such kind of, you know, uh, Beijing versus Hong Kong, this kind of binary opposition. Why is it so strong? It is also partly because there is a kind of 
steep social conservatism here because Hong Kong is a free uh, port, it's a colony, but also a very successful one. In a matter of uh, uh, five decades, we have developed from a third world uh, 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 region into a uh, uh, very developed uh, 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 financial center. So this is an element which, is, which contributes uh, to, it, to this kind of social conservatism. So uh, now we come to the fourth point. Um, I would like to deal with localism. Um, of course, uh, since the 2019 uh, revolt, uh, it is clear that there is a kind of very right wing localism here. But I would argue that uh, we must also aware that the Hong Kong people are entitled to their own Hong Kong identity, to their own language and to their own culture. And for because of this, they have the right to determine their own future as well. Um, as to the uh, right-wing localism, yes, they were influential, but they were also organizationally very weak. It is uh, 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 the absence, uh, I mean, the absence of an organized left wing allowed this right wing localist to have a much bigger voice than its actual organizational strength. It was not strong enough to steer the whole movement uh, to its own, uh, entirely to its own agenda. But it was able to hold actions involving thousands, appealing to Trump or occasionally. I would stress occasionally. Uh, occasionally, uh, some people will make a racist verbal attack on migrant, on uh, mainland immigrants. But um, uh, as a whole, uh, we cannot say that they ha have been uh, dominant all throughout uh, the movement. Actually, the five demands is not raised by, 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 by any right wing, it is spontaneously come up from below. But I think Beijing still, in some sense, succeeded in one thing, that they make use of the uh, right-wing localist to depict the 2019 revolt as a anti-China, anti-Chinese uh, 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 movement. And this has a negative influence on, on, on mainland Chinese people. Say, for instance, uh, uh, quite a number of Chinese mainlands uh, now, uh, now say, I mean, uh, in 2019 or uh, early 2020, uh, uh, are worried about their safety uh, if they come to Hong Kong. So uh, I'll argue that, yes, uh, uh, we have to differentiate two kinds of localism, but at the same time, uh, we also have to recognize that, yes, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the relative strength of the far right in uh, uh, trying to deteriorate uh, uh, the movement. So it comes to uh, number five, my fifth point. One of the most interesting things about last year's revolt was uh, the rise of a new trade union movement. It was uh, uh, within the context where the movements was highly spontaneous. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> the, uh, 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 it started as uh, a movement which was hostile to leaders, hostile to organizations, yet at the end of the day, it also gave birth to this new trade union movement and led mostly by young workers. Um, <coughs> so, uh, uh, and uh, uh, we do not, uh, let us not forget that the revolt also started as a movement 
whose perspective about democracy never extend beyond the political realm. Yet, the revolt trigger of this new trade union movement might have the potential to extend the movement beyond this political realm and shake up industrial uh, relations here. Uh, surely, most were small unions, but there are also big unions. For instance, the Hospital Authority Employee Alliance has a membership of 20,000 out of 80,000 employees. And it launched a successful five-day strike in February 2020 to demand the government to close the border with mainland China to stop the virus COVID-19 from spreading. <clears throat> Anyone who is serious about building an international labor movement would doubtless support the building of this new trade union movement while arguing for a leftist cause. Now we come to the second last point uh, that uh, I would like to deal with uh, uh, China and Hong Kong. The rise of localism in Hong Kong could be progressive as long as it is also consciously rejects the right wing discourse of racism and xenophobia. I argue for the Hong Kong people to determine their own future. But we should also link this demand to the demand for democratization of China as a whole as well, including the self-determination for ethnic minorities. If today there is strong separatism among minorities in Tibet or Xinjiang or Taiwan and Hong Kong, it is the Beijing regime which is first to be blamed. Nearly a century ago, both the KMT and the CCP pursued the reunification of the Chinese nation as a response to the colonization and occupation by imperial powers. But the CCP was different from the KMT, at least at that time. The CCP wants to achieve national unification through its programs of self-determination for ethnic minorities. This is also what has helped the CCP won over progressive elements of the minorities at that time. However, it was the party eventual abandonment of its program of self-determination for, for ethnic minorities among many other broken promises, has determined its own degeneration until it reached a point that the party today has evolved into a party of bureaucratic capitalism. While a democratic alliance of Han Chinese and other ethnic minorities on the basis of self-determination uh, self remains a progressive agenda. Very likely, this could only be achieved by the absence of the CCP dictatorship or any one party dictatorship. So now we come to the last point. Uh, I briefly talk about the young generation who was the main guide of last year revolt. And then the rest of the story is. Uh, uh, fully understood by the audience here because uh, within a year, Beijing retaliated fully by imposing its national security law on us. From the direct result of these two years of struggle, one could say that we have lost the battle. In view of the ongoing harsh repression, it will take a long time for the movement to rise up again. In essence, if we have to make a balance sheet on the contributions of the 1997 generation, well, I think on one hand, we would say that, yes. Uh, the upside is that they were able to throw away the old liberal illusion of trying to convince Beijing to give us democracy. And uh, smart enough to start a great revolt. This is what, what they were capable of. But on the other hand, 
uh, from the very beginning, actually, and especially now with retrospect, there is a little hope of success of this revolt uh, 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 at, uh, in the first place, because a one city revolution, given the relationships of forces, is quite impossible. I think uh, uh, the, the contributions of the young people in 2019 reminds me of the story of the emperor's new clothes, where the boy yelled, at, oh, look, the emperor has no clothes on. Well, the boy, of course, make a big, great contribution. He has triggered off a political crisis for the emperor. But obviously, the boy was in no position to solve the crisis. Similarly, the Hong Kong young people have been brave enough, brave enough to trigger off a great revolt and then uh, cause a great embarrassment and crisis for Beijing. But the young people were not politically equipped to lead the revolt to the best result. And also, they thought the 2019 revolt was the end game. Okay, they were wrong. It was just the beginning of a long-term historic struggle. Nevertheless, the 2019 revolt does constitute a new departure point for this long march of democracy. Thank you. That's the end of my report. Uh, okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Ao, for your insightful presentation. I will now ask you a few questions about the new union movement and Hong Kong self-determination. Now, first of all, you observe how the pandemic, combined with the national security law, undermined the momentum of the anti-extradition movement. However, the inadequate government response to the pandemic also led to a successful large-scale strike by hospital workers in February last year. Uh, furthermore, one response to the national security law by the movement was to organize into independent trade unions. So what we see now is a dwindling down of rallies and assemblies replaced by what seems to be a growing pro-democracy union movement. Uh, in this new stage of the movement, what are your predictions for the prospects and possibilities for Hong Kong's new unions? Well, uh, um, yes, uh, the, uh, uh, the national security law is so uh, nasty that Yes, it has successfully uh, repressed it to the, the movement and uh, uh, we have lost the battle. But uh, on the other hand, I think, uh, yes, uh, uh, this will be a time for us to uh, think about the future, to review the, the revolt and to have a long debate on uh, the way forward. So it is time to think, it is time to read. Uh, as to the, uh, 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 as to the, um, uh, uh, the, the new trade union movement, now they are in very difficult situation, surely. Uh, the, uh, New trade union, uh, new civil servants unions has uh, disbanded itself, uh, despite it has uh, three, four thousand uh, membership. And imagine that they had done this in very short period of time. Uh, they, 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 they disband themselves is try is uh, uh, one of the reason is to, uh, to try to protect those members because we are now in a great purge. Uh, all the civil servants unions, uh, 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 yes, all the civil servants uh, will be required to pledge an oath uh, to the government. And uh, we all know that uh, this is just a pretext 
uh, to uh, to further repress uh, the Hong Kong uh, the civil servants, especially those uh, uh, they are critical. So um, uh, 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 the situation would be very difficult uh, for 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 the union, and uh, uh, it is possible that uh, the uh, newly established unions, which numbers I mean the most uh, those who are still active, uh, they are they, they numbers uh, maybe I don't know the uh, update uh, figures who are still uh, but. Those who are still uh, uh, active will be numbering uh, 30, 40. But yes, uh, it is possible that eventually they will they will all crush them. But at the same time, at the same time, it also depends on uh, how should we react. Depends on our own tactics and strategy. I think. The uh, one of the uh, unfortunate thing is that um, when the movement was already on the decline uh, from last December onward, I mean, after the uh, two revolt in the uh, campus of the universities, um, when the movements were already in decline, I think uh, we should acknowledge that uh, this is a fact, and then we should turn from offensive to a defensive uh, strategy. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, since then, uh, a proper debate on this issue has has not really taken place. Uh, in the two years of experience, I think uh, we have repeatedly witnesses a situation where uh, a healthy public debate among movement among the movement is very very difficult. So of course this is not unique, but in the Hong Kong situation we have a we have uh, been um, also compounded by the fact that many many young people are inexperienced. They have no political training before, so it is, makes things even harder which I have described that in my book. So um, uh, 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 that is also why it's a, we have a situation where uh, actually uh, where one of my friends, uh, one day I bump, him, I, 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 I bump up with him uh, and then we talk a lot about the, the, the movements uh, and he described the movement as a car without a brick. Well, in certain sense, it is true because uh, uh, the, 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 the vanguard of the movement, the young people, uh, they keep on doing, uh, making an offensive where, when the situation is not really uh, 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 suitable. So uh, yes, I think, um, uh, about the futures and possibilities of the Hong Kong new union movement. It really depends also on how we do things. If we do it in a more sensible ways, then we can still preserve our forces and, uh, and, 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 and have a uh, uh, damage control. But if we continue uh, to disregard the situations and try to make offensive, uh, it will uh, make it will make us even more difficult. But I think I think uh, uh, now more and more people understand this, and uh, th this is uh, I think uh, 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 a better situation. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you, Mr. Al, for that very robust answer. I would like to ask you now about the issue of self-determination for Hong Kong. So you suggest that there can be a type of Hong Kong localism that rejects xenophobia and reactionary sentiment. Uh, indeed, you assert that revolution in one city is an impossibility and that Hong Kong's pro-democracy movement must find allies in mainland China if it is to succeed. 
So what elements do you think exist within the, well, within the diverse population of mainland China and the, and the diaspora as well, that you, could, that you feel could be potential allies for Hong Kong? Yeah. Uh, well, I think, uh, 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 firstly, we must bear in mind one thing that um, despite today's uh, a visible opposition does not exist in China, even opposition as individual is nearly uh, impossible. It's very hard at least. But this should not lead us into believing that, well, this is all we see. Huh? Actually, so in the Chinese situation, so there are always strong undercurrents which was not visible, but it is there. Uh, and uh, we must thank, uh, 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 we must thank uh, uh, that, thank, we must be thankful to one thing uh, that for the past uh, 30 years, despite the post crackdown periods of 1989 uh, the Tiananmen massacre, despite that, uh, the, this great leap forward to capitalism, this economic opening up of China actually did, uh, has laid down uh, very basic elements uh, for the future democratic movements. Firstly, is that uh, uh, in the past 30 years, you can just go to the library, you will see how many books has been published, how many, I mean, uh, the English books or any other language books has been translated into in, uh, Chinese. I, we, have, we have witnessed a, 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 some kind of cultural renaissance yeah, since the cultural, ref, uh, uh, cultural revolution. Uh, uh, that uh, 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 where knowledge has been relatively freely uh, 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 circulate. Of course, sensitive one will be, will be, will be censored, but uh, anyway, uh, that is that, 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 that this created, you know, say, uh, uh, people who are over 30 years old, they have uh, gained much more knowledge and the under and, and, and also understandings of the outside world much more than uh, previous decades. I would say we have never seen that before. So, for the moment. Uh, those progressive elements, intellectuals, thinking, those those uh, 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 those uh, 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 toiling masses who are also thinking persons, they will think for the, themselves. They will, for the moment, they are denied a voice, but that does not mean they stop thinking. So, uh, uh, although no one knows uh, when. Uh, they will begin to exert some kind of influence upon the development uh, on the of future development. But I think uh, 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 this, this uh, progressive elements definitely always there, even if it is for the moment a bit quiet. And secondly, I also mentioned about, I, I just mentioned about, uh, yeah, uh, uh, the contributions of China rapid developments in the economies and industry and so on, how this contributes to democratic movement. Uh, previously, even uh, as, as late as uh, 40 years ago, China is still a peasant country. It was, it was quite industrialized, but far from complete. And uh, is a working class uh, is just around 100 million. But today we have a China which is uh, uh, highly urbanized. We have a working class, uh, industrial working class, which is one fourth of the world total. So you can imagine that uh, that uh, any uh, uh, labor movements uh, in the world could not really uh, disregard this huge working class in China. So, uh, and uh, we all know that, yes, uh, 
uh, from the histories of the labor movements that uh, labor has always been a uh, 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 great contributor to uh, democratic um, development. So uh, I think uh, in the longer run, these are all, uh, I mean, progressive intellectuals, progressive middle class, and also uh, those thinking elements among the new working class. They are all potential allies for, the, for, for Hong Kong. Uh, okay, okay. Thank you for the answer, Mr. Al. Uh, moving on to a more practical line of questioning. Uh, what do you think will the impact of the national security law be on cross-border solidarity and organizing? So already we see the chilling effect uh, of the law, which has uh, suppressed cross-border political activity, uh, such as work of Chinese labor NGOs based in Hong Kong. Do you think there are ways to circumvent the effect of the law uh, to allow Hong Kongers to form alliances with mainland Chinese? Uh, for example, uh, with building a report between the Hong Kong and mainland Chinese diasporas overseas be pivotal in the face of increasing repression at home? Uh, I don't think it could be done uh, in the immediate future. This will like uh, uh, banging, banging your head on the wall. In the medium term, it's possible. Uh, because, uh, not necessarily because uh, 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 it is easy, but because of one thing, that uh, the seed of labor activism, activism has already been, been sold in China. And for the past uh, something like 20, 20 or 25 years, uh, there is there, there, there is already a, a very thin layer of labor activists in China. They are indigenously uh, developed. They rely on themselves. Surely, uh, they, some of them will also uh, collaborate with, the, with some Hong Kong groups with, uh, with their help, with their, uh, 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 with their out, especially outreaching the international scene. Uh, say, uh, for, uh, for example, uh, targeting the French company. So, yes, there was, and uh, that, that there were, uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, close collaboration between some Hong Kong labor groups and mainland China's labor activists. Now it's very difficult for them. Some organization has, uh, has to uh, actually fold their uh, labor center in China or shrink its size Downsize, downsize is their the, the, the centers. Some cease operating, but actually uh, uh, for the mainland labor activists, many are still doing their own work, sometimes in isolation. Uh, but what is more is uh, for those experienced labor activists, they still maintain a kind of network, very loose, very loose but uh, still say uh, helping workers to have a litigation, helping workers to do uh, to, 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 uh, um, uh, in the court or uh, giving advice to them, as example, on an individual basis, but still they are doing things. So in a sense that, uh, 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 the, this labor activism is, has not totally died. Uh, and I think even someday or in the medium term, even when the Chinese authority decided to 
have a to crackdown so total that they eliminate all these individual labor activists, even if they could do that. However, uh, for the past 25 years, there has been enough uh, common workers who by their own effort or by the effort of the labor activists, they has already raised their awareness. They has already trained themselves. And uh, I, uh, 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 previously, uh, um, yeah, uh, be especially before Xi Jinping came to power, uh, well, in many parts of China, especially southern part, I'm more familiar with the southern part of China, yeah, in many cities, uh, you may say that every week there is, a, there is some kind of strike, spontaneous, short, one day, half day, yeah? but lots of them, lots of them. And the workers somehow, you know, uh, uh, went through this experience, uh, won some successes. So therefore, their awareness of their rights has been uh, uh, much more higher than say 30 years ago when the rural migrant workers first entered the city. This is a great difference from that, from, from then. So I would say that China has changed so much and the Chinese uh, uh, working people has changed this so much, has been educated through their own struggle that I would say that even if the authority eliminate all the labor Individual, active, individual labor activists, they still face a working class which is very different from 40, 30 years or not to say 40 years before. So in the longer run, I am, I, 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 I am uh, optimistic. And, uh, 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 but of course, in the medium term, no one knows. Oh, okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Al, for that very thoughtful response. We will now move on to the open question and answer session. Uh, members of the audience are welcome to input their questions into the QA function, and I will relay them to Mr. Al. Uh, we only have a few questions, so I'll start off with what we have. Uh, Charlie Hall asks, Given what you, uh, Mr. Al, have said about the anti extradition movement being a car without a break, uh, what would a defensive strategy have looked from? And how the younger and how the younger militants uh, have been won over to such a strategy? And I guess this question applies to the present as well. Like what will a defensive strategy look like in the current day? And how will we win over uh, the younger militant protesters? To, uh, such a strategy. Okay, uh, sorry, there was a bit of trouble in the audio. I hope it's better now. Uh, ah, okay. I, I can. I'm reading the question. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yes. This is much better now. Yes. Uh, okay. I. 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 Uh, briefly respond to the question. Okay. Yes. Uh, um. Uh. Uh, I've got what uh, uh, a defensive strategy. Uh, I would say that um, uh, I disagree uh, with the with the with the with the opinion that all the pan Democrat uh, lawmakers should resign after two of their colleagues has been disqualified by the government in protest. 
actually uh, the, the pandemic uh, 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 and, uh, the lawmakers, most of them may not be so willing to resign, but they were forced to because there were very strong uh, 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 opinions uh, from, especially from probably the young, the young generations, uh, uh, online attack uh, on those who are hesitate to resign. But I disagree with this tactic. Uh, this is not a principle to agree disagreement, but I, I disagree with that because uh, 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 because uh, uh, in such a crackdown, in such a uh, big, big purge, we should make full use of our position. Uh, to, this is very important. Uh, but the reason that those who argue for a, 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 a complete resignation is because, well, we have to protest against the government. Uh, we have to do something. But uh, again and again, this is because they thought that uh, the only way uh, a lawmaker or a district board member, just like some kind of council member, huh? the, the district board members, uh, the only the only way they can uh, uh, resist is uh, being visible on the camera, being visible in the uh, chambers of the legislature. Say, for instance, trying to uh, fully uh, uh, filibustering, try to stop the, uh, the, the the passing of law and so on. But I don't think the this is the only road of lawmakers of the I mean the opposition lawmakers. We have here in Hong Kong. I think one of the colonial legacy is what is that there the the, the real civil society is very weak. Uh, the pandemic ones thought that they were big. No, Hong Kong civil society is very weak because the Hong Kong people are not as are not used to self-organization. Nearly all trade unions are very weak. There are there were except there are exceptions of course, but very few. And most of the memberships are just on paper. And if you look at the community level, look at the uh, grassroots level, there is very rare self-organization, mutual health, and so on. This has grown. Yes, this has grown uh, significantly since the 2019 uh, movement. Uh, th this is one, uh, I, I must admit that. But as a whole, uh, Hong Kong democratic movements lack a real organizational strength. And the reason for that is because uh, 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 there is a lack of ability of and experiences in self-organizing. So, uh, 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 but the 2019 uh, revolt, uh, one of its legacy is spontaneity and hostility towards organization. This, in this sense, is also detrimental to uh, self-organization uh, effort. So I, I think uh, in terms of defensive strategy, uh, in this uh, great purge, it is even more important that uh, uh, we should uh, uh, conduct resistance uh, on the community level, in trade union, uh, and uh, 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 in all kinds of uh, civic association, uh, including mutual health, because in this pandemic, in this uh, economic downturn, in this uh, growing unemployment, Definitely, we have a lot of work to do in mutual help. Uh, but unfortunately, I think uh, those most politically active uh, 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 people, especially the young, uh, they often overlook this uh, side of the story and still uh, too much preoccupied by, you know, uh, things under the limelight. So uh, 
this is a uh, uh, a, a quite a, a, an issue that uh, needs to be clarified. Uh, okay, okay. Can you hear me clearly now? Uh, so thank you, uh, Mr. Ao, for response. And thank you, Charlie, for asking the question. Uh, so the next question will be from J.C. Wong, who asks, uh, do you think Hong Kongers have become a nation like the Tibetans and readers and are therefore entitled to self-determination? Uh... Okay. Uh, could you repeat the question? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yes. So it's the question asked by J.C. Wong, who says, do you think Hong Kongers have become a nation like the ah. Tibetans and Uyghurs yeah, and are therefore entitled to self-determination? Um, I think uh, 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 this is a uh, difficult question. It's because it involves a very difficult issue. What is nation? How do we define nation? And uh, I think in this issue, I think the problem is that uh, uh, I don't think there is something entirely objective criteria to define a nation. You must also think about what the people under discussion huh, look at, uh, 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 think of themselves. Huh? So there is a very strong also subjective element here. But uh, my, my, therefore, my uh, 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 response to the question is, firstly, uh, I do not know whether Hong Kong people constitute a nation because there are still a strong proportions of peoples who simultaneously identify themselves as Chinese and Hong Kongese. So how are you going to uh, 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 treat these uh, big proportions of people, uh, 30 or 40 percent of people? So uh, if you draw a lines of so-called Hong Kong, Hong Kong nation, how you are you going to draw that is, would it be very divisive? That is the question. So it is a uh, difficult question. But on the other hand, I will not, uh, uh, I, will, uh, I will not uh, 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 say Hong Kong is not a nation. Basically, I raise an alternative uh, 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 to this nation discourse. I will prefer the term Hong Kong identity that uh, that uh, the, the Beijing government or, uh, or, 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 the, or the whole world should respect uh, the Hong Kong people identity and their rights to determine their own fate. I think that will be just enough uh, to uh, point towards a direction where it will help us to find our way out, but, but at the same time to win over the support of mainland Chinese people and not to antagonize them. It is precisely because one thing that uh, this Hong Kong identity uh, has a very brief history. There are many things haven't been sought out by history yet. For instance, as I said, uh, there's, a, there's a huge proportion of the population which has, which, has, uh, main, which has maintained a very, very strong connections with mainland Chinese relatives, their families. Their roots, most of, many of them are, are still have roots in mainland China which is not the case in Taiwan. So uh, 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 I don't think therefore uh, emphasize on the 
on, on the on the on the term Hong Kong nation will help us really go to uh, go forward. But on the other hand, if you use the term Hong Kong identity, well, it looks like more moderate, but I think it is more suitable for the Hong Kong special situation. So from uh, 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 from a, uh, a strategy point of view, um, a, a bit more moderate uh, uh, discourse uh, actually will be, I, I would argue, uh, smarter, especially when we have to deal with a, uh, 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 a horrible regime. Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you for that uh, response. So tying in to the last question, uh, Michael Rubin asks that uh, he understands that Han chauvinism has long been a part of the uh, Chinese Communist Party's rule over China. So do you, Mr. Ao, favor raising internationalism, uh, so solidarity with Tibet, Xinjiang and Inner Mongolia as a way to find allies uh, for the Hong Kong for democracy movement. Uh, could you repeat the first part of the question? I lost the first part. Uh, yes. So in the first part, uh, Michael Rubin ah, okay. observes. Right, that... right. I, I can I can read now. Yes. Okay, it's there. Yeah. Okay. A moment. Okay. Um, yes, uh, 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 yes, uh, the Hans Chauvinism is, uh, is uh, uh, long been a part of the Chinese Communist Party, is it, yes, definitely. Um, And uh, 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 it, this is something that we must uh, uh, fight against it, especially when this Han chauvinism has actually, it is responsible for the great centrifugal forces in China today. And the first one should be blamed is the Beijing regime themselves. Um, but uh, 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 concerning about uh, uh, internationalism, I think, uh, well, it's just uh, uh, for anyone who uphold uh, the democratic rights, human rights, and uh, ethnic minorities' rights, uh, it is our duty to, to, to support all those repressed people no matter in Tibet or Xinjiang or in the Mongolia or in Hong Kong, unfortunately. Uh, but this is a difficult uh, uh, task. And especially uh, uh, when, uh, uh, when, when some people uh, thought that uh, the American government could come to their aid. And we have already seen uh, those uh, uh, right wing protesters in Hong Kong, the uh, wavings, uh, uh, the, 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 the portraits of Trump and so on, uh, which is quite distasteful. So uh, it is very important that uh, no matter the, it's very important that the left, the labor movements, uh, all the progressive peoples in the world uh, come to the aid of these repressed nations and people in China and do not stand by and fold with their arms folded while watching uh, uh, American governments giving rhetoric support to 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 to, to these uh, uh, repressed people. Um, 
for instance, uh, up to now, is, uh, no matter Trump, uh, Biden will, will, will well, uh, Biden is just, uh, uh, ha has been uh, the, the, the president for two short a time, but for Trump, okay, well, most of the things he, he has sanctioned against China, these are just very <laughs> symbolic. Uh, from, from, from the early on, Trump has his own agenda. And it is no secret that he is an admirer of uh, autocratic leaders. So it comes back to the question that, yes, we need internationalism. We need international support, not just China, not just for China. To what is happening in Burma now today is really a very exciting moment. Uh, 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 but the left or the, all the progressive people or the labor movement must be more assertive in uh, 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 in leading this kind of cross-border solidarity. Only through this can we fight uh, 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 the, the, the evil uh, forces uh, in both sides of the world. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you for your response. Uh, the next question will be from Grayson Lanza, who asks, how can international socialist and trade union organizers best engage with Hong Kongers driving this movement without acting as a vehicle for right-wing anti-China sentiment? So you've already observed in your response that the right-wing element in the pro-democracy movement is quite vocal. So how can the left engage with the movement without uh, encouraging these right-wing right sentiments? Okay. Uh, well, my, my, my short response to this question is, uh, then you have to outcompete Trump in supporting Hong Kong and uh, other minorities. Only through this, you can prove yourselves as a uh, genuine uh, internationalist. Of course, the other way around is also important that we should also support uh, the BLM, uh, uh, the, the Burma, the Burma struggle and so on. Uh, although uh, just, uh, we have just uh, seven or eight people, but we did, <laughs> we did uh, uh, hold up play cards to support the BLM in the, uh, in last year's uh, June 4th uh, memorial. Uh, we try our best. But on the other hand, yes, it is very important that uh, uh, the American or the Western world uh, or any part of the world uh, to do their best in uh, spreading the words uh, of the democratic movement here, to support those who have been arrested and uh, imprisoned, uh, uh, to explain to people why this, uh, to explain to your colleagues, to your, to your neighbors, uh, to your friends, why uh, the Chinese and Hong Kong people's fight for democracy matter for the whole world. For the simple fact that, uh, well, China is one fifth of the world population. And Chinese working class is one fifth of the, of the of the world total. And uh, 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 not to say that China today is so strong. That its influence is felt everywhere, every sector, from the economies, military to politics. So uh, if we could not democrat democratize China, this will be uh, 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 a great push from the right wing agenda and make the world even more horrible in 20 or 30 years time or even less. So uh, 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 surely there's uh, one of the 
issues that define the 21st century is the global contest between China and, and the United States. Uh, 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 as, uh, as, as genuine democratic and left uh, 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 and, and people who uphold the left wing value, they do not need to take sides, you know, they, they don't, neither Washington nor Beijing, but one have to absolutely on the side of the repressed people, even at some moments, uh, they may make some, these repressed people in their resistance, they may make mistake, they may say something silly, but that does not make their resistance themselves uh, illegitimate or irrelevant. So uh, in this way, we have to maintain a non-factional uh, 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 position in, uh, in, 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 in seeing their struggle. Surely, as my book or my presentation has also testified, huh, we must also uh, criticize the wrongdoings uh, in this movement, point out the inadequacy in order to forward. But as a whole, we must be on the side of the repressed people. All right, thanks for the response. Uh, our next question will be from Pete Ratcliffe, who asks, um, on the issue of on the issue of independence, I agree about the possible reactionary use of the slogan uh, of the of the concept of independence by the right. But autonomy under one country, two systems is contradictory. The present crisis was inevitable. Should we not openly say that one country, two systems is dead? And doesn't this mean independence? Uh, again, I think this question ties into the relationships between nationhood, independence, and self-determination. Uh, perhaps there can be self-determination without overt demands for national independence. Oh, okay, yes. Uh, but uh, 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 I think yes. Uh, the the answer, the, the, my replies to the uh, to the question is that oh, uh, well, uh, for uh, 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 yes, the, the one country two system is that Hong Kong autonomy is dead. And what is the way forward? Well, the, uh, should we just uh, demand for independence? I think, uh, I, 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 alternatively, alternatively, I argue for self-determination, not independence. But that does not preclude independence because if it is self-determination, then you have to have a democratic choice among the people. And uh, uh, well, say for instance, if there is a referendum, people could have vote on either they go independent or remain in China, but a uh, liberalized China, okay? Where Hong Kong peoples maintain an autonomy uh, the status, but within a democratic China. It really depends on how uh, 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 on, on, on Hong Kong people supporting which side. So, well, if Hong Kong people supported uh, the majority support and independence, then okay, then this self-determination eventually evolved into independence. But that is not the only scenario. There is also a scenario where uh, uh, through a referendum, Hong Kong people choose not to leave China, but at the same time, wants to change China's regime, wants to have a democratic China, a reunion with China, 
you know, a union with Ch mainland China on a equal and uh, respected basis. Actually, it's a uh, 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 Lenin said to talk about this long time ago on his uh, famous uh, 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 pamphlets on uh, self determination, uh, and he make a uh, comparison to, to to the ideas of uh, to, 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 to the idea and practice of divorce. Huh? The right to divorce doesn't mean you necessarily have to be uh, have to separate with your companion. It just admits the right to do this. Similarly, uh, uh, when we argue for self determination, it may end up in independence, but it may not. Okay, so uh, and I, I and I and I still argue that uh, Hong Kong remaining within China, but at the same time on a uh, equal and autonomous basis. This actually is what the Communist Party most afraid, because it means that we are sending a message to the mainland Chinese people. Okay, not only we should. Demand for self-government. You, the mainland Chinese people, should also do the same, and we should work together to have a regime change and to build a new democratic China, where all ethnic minorities are 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 are, are, are respected as equal, genuinely equal. Uh, so that is why I think, uh, yes, uh, 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 self-determination is a better political uh, strategy than outright independence. And, all, and, and not to mention one thing that, yes, uh, from the very beginning, my book has covered that part as well. From the very beginning, there are signs that uh, the Hong Kong independent movement, behind this Hong Kong independent movement, there were also possibilities that the Beijing government or their agent is involved in this uh, independent movement from the very beginning. This does not mean that all of them are suspicious. I mean, uh, uh, but at least some of them is suspicious. Okay, uh, Mr. Ao, thank you for your response. Uh, we are nearing the end of this event, uh, and I'll thank you will be able to, to field a few more questions before wrapping up. A common thread running through some of the questions revolve around the issue of US sanctions or uh, intervention by Western countries. So um, what would your stance be, Mr. Ao, on uh, foreign intervention in Hong Kong's uh, struggle. Uh, could you repeat that? Uh, yes. So, in general, what are your thoughts? What What is your analysis uh, about uh, foreign intervention on behalf of Hong Kong? against the uh, Chinese Communist Party. So, for example, uh, US sanctions against Chinese and Hong Kong officials. Uh, uh, these are just exactly the examples uh, of uh, symbolic uh, uh, actions that I just talked about. Sanctioning individuals officials. How would it would how, how effective that would be in making Beijing's uh, 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 making concession? I don't think so. Uh, what is uh, 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 what is re what is required is much much more st stronger uh, 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 actions. Not necessarily the most hawkish one. Huh? I'm not uh, uh, arguing for that let alone military actions and war and so on, uh, which 
some right-wing locals has been arguing from day one onwards uh, that they thought that yes, uh, yeah, uh, uh, the most hardline is better, you know, very hawkish uh, response uh, that I mean uh, that they are they are demanding that and so on. No, uh, 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 I think a a a a a a more important right now that yeah, the more important uh, uh work is to uh uh, uh is to uh, uh is to forge a international solidarity from below among civil association among labor movement say for instance uh, i i think uh, uh it would be it would be great you know to uh, to have uh, real exchange between the new trade union movements activists and uh, 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 and and labor movements uh, from all parts of the world. And um, uh, 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 especially in this uh, you know uh, internet era, digital era, doing this kind of uh, exchange and events is not that difficult at all. And we must do it fast because. Uh, uh, yeah, Hong, Hong Kong is uh, Hong government is uh, uh, will finish Hong Kong very soon, including uh, freedom of speech, including crackdown on the on, on the internet and so on. But right now, I think I I I, 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 I one of the regretful thing is that. Uh, uh, such kind of international solidarity from below uh, is still very rare uh, in, uh, 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 among, uh, uh, in Hong Kong, let alone in mainland China. So I think uh, 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 how to work on that is very important. Uh, all right, thank you for that response. I think our last or second last question of this event will be from Anonymous, who asks, uh, what political education needs to be prioritized at a grassroots level uh, in addition to mutual aid or health networks? So what, what form of political education would be the most important, uh, especially for newly uh, politicized youth. Uh, in this uh, in this uh, aspect, I think uh, uh, not just the young people. We all have we all have to rethink what is revolution, what is democracy. I think um, uh, 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 yes. I I I don't want to be seen as a patronizing, but I have been you know um, uh, being activist uh, for forty years, and for so many years I have witnessed one thing among Chinese, uh, which is quite uh, common be them uh, mainland Chinese, Hong Kong Chinese, or Taiwanese Chinese. Surely not everyone is like that, no. Yeah. But uh, there's a big proportion of people. Uh, 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 when they talk of, when they talk about democracy, when they demand democracy, but the actual behavior is quite authoritarian. Uh, they run the organization of authoritarian, in an authoritarian way. They lead the organization in a authoritarian way, and they are not to, not quite tolerant as they should be, and so on. So this uh, 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 some may uh, at, uh, attribute this uh, to so-called Chinese nation, national character. I don't believe this kind of thing. I don't believe in cultural determination. I do believe cultures. Or history play a play, play play a big part, 
but not determines our behavior. But at least at the visible level, there is such kind of behavior that when we fight for democracy, but in many ways, sometimes we, we just acted like the enemy we oppose. <laughs> and, uh, and also about revolution, right? Yeah, uh, actually, uh, uh, since 2014, uh, since the umbrella movement, I've been writing a lot of uh, comments uh, in the Hong Kong media and so on. Uh, sometimes I also find it very problematic when people de uh, uh, fight for revolution. What do they mean by revolution? Uh, there is a historical lesson that has to be learned. Both the KMT and the CCP began as revolutionary organization. And democrat and and it is not general revolution, it is a democratic revolution. <laughs> but in the end, they all evolved into terrible dictatorship. And I think uh, here is there is something, you know, uh, deep rooted. Uh, thing, uh, uh, for this, for I would say that uh, for for the simple reasons, if one wants wants to simple quite, uh, uh, the answers, uh, it's not just about culture. Of, uh, we have two thousand years of uh, absolutism. Yeah, uh, uh, we have a lot of revolution actually. Yeah, but this revolution only plays the role of facilitating a dynastic change. It is a revolution which traditionally Chinese will say it is a kind of Yi Xing Ga Ming, a revolution which just changed the name of the family name of the of the emperor, but didn't change the monarchy, the empire. Okay, so among Chinese, there is of course a, a lot of people when they say they are for democratic revolution, but when they act it out. Sometimes it still looks quite looks like a revolution for the benefit of dynastic change. Um, and this has to do with, well, if we, if we not to talk about culture, uh, I, I would prefer to talk about one thing that for the fact for, 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 for that, that it's because uh, uh, in a direct sense, uh, 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 China's modernization has been being uh, 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 forced upon by Western power. And in the course of which colonial war, uh, Great World War, internal chaos, warlordism, and then, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, repeated famine and so on, actually is a mix. A uh democratic uh party really based on working class uh, this can make this uh, uh uh very very difficult for them so uh this uh, uh, uh also determines one thing that well uh, with, if there is no real democratic urban force, urban democratic forces to uh, educate the people to get rid of this authoritarian behavior, to learn uh, how to run the organization democratically, how to resolve differences, how to be tolerant, how to be not, uh, how not to be patronizing uh, to women, and ethnic minorities to poor people, etc. Yeah, but this has to be cautiously conducted. But the appalling fact is that, at least so, yeah, for Hong Kong, as I'm so I'm familiar with Hong Kong, yeah, for the past uh, uh, thirty years, yeah, uh, when there beginnings a kind of Hong Kong cautiousness, eh? a little bit, little bit, gradually, gradually, yeah. Uh, when the Hong Kong Democratic Movement uh, born in uh, 30 years ago, since uh, it is unfortunately it is just an electoral campaign war. 
the British government let them have some kind of uh, 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 elections and they can win elections to have some seats, to have big salaries, to have fame and so on. But they never really conducted any serious democratic education at all. And they do not, in general, promote and encourage community self-organizing, labor self-organizing, because they themselves are obsessed with authoritarianism. Uh, and they, they themselves want to play the big brother role, okay? So I think uh, we have had enough of this kind of democratic movement. And then the same kind, the, the same things uh, could be said about the revolution. What do you mean by revolution? Yeah, I talk about in my books that yes, uh, even in the, the middle middle school students, there there are some democratic lover, but there are also people who, even if they are just middle middle school students, uh, they they are also very you know authoritarian person who try to yeah uh, uh, control the the small platform they are forming and so. And the saying that whoever is the strongest should have to say this kind of mentality is still very dominant. So um, uh, right now we in this uh, uh, downturn of the movements and the uh, end of Hong Kong autonomy, well, uh, there are still many things we can do. We can do a lot of daily resistance we can do, community organization and so on. But without a thorough rethinking of the very term of democracy and revolutions, then I'm afraid we won't go very far. Okay, um, so I just want to step in. Um, thank you, Theo, for moderating the questions and, and apologies for some of the technical difficulties uh, on the back end. And, and yeah, just to reiterate something from the chat, we've approached kind of for five minutes path or my 90 minute mark, and it's getting pretty late on some, 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 some sides of where people, some regions in which people are calling in. So we're going to try to end uh, promptly and respect folks' times. Um, but before that, yeah, I just want to kind of reiterate, there's been a lot of really amazing questions in the chat, and we also apologize about this accessibility purposes um, and, you know, trying to kind of keep it so that all the questions filter in the Q&A. And we recognize that there's there's still a whole slew of questions that aren't answered yet. So, um, you know, feel free to email us if you have any follow-up questions for us or, or for Al, and we'll try our best to connect you um, and see if your questions can get answered. But on that note, again, thank you everyone for joining us book talk and thank you, uh, all of you for sharing your insightful analysis of the situation in Hong Kong. Um, before we end, I, I just wanna make a brief shout out for uh, an event that Laosan Collective is also organizing uh, in a few days, uh, next Wednesday or Thursday, depending on where you are on cleaning workers organizing, right? So I think that's a very, uh, very helpful transition from some of the things that we're talking about in terms of what we can do to support um, Hong Kong's labor movement and also supporting internationalism from below as Al, Al, Al just mentioned. So, so there will be a cleaning workers exchange uh, uh, on the 24th, 25th, uh, which is your next uh, uh, Wednesday or Thursday. And there will be cleaning workers and organizers from Hong Kong, uh, United States, Malaysia, and Colombia will be sharing their experiences uh, in workplace organizing during COVID and the pandemic in their own respective milieus. So we hope this could be uh, you know, uh, could be another kind of um, um, important follow up from this event and on a note of what it means for us to continue to build workers organizing and solidarity between mass movements across borders. Uh, and I'm sharing the event link here for that event I was just mentioning for next week. And, you know, please sign up ahead of time. And thanks again for attending this talk and email us at laosanhk uh, at, at gmail.com if you have any questions. And again, thanks again to all the co-sponsoring groups. And uh, have a good evening, everyone.